If you like adventure, suspense, intrigue, this Bible book is for you. Welcome to Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. The book is 1 Samuel, and it's the ninth book in the Bible. And it's quite a book because it introduces us to this to this new era in the history of Israel following the conquest of Palestine by Joshua and then the period of the judges that was so chaotic, now we're transitioning to a new era. It's around 1000 BC. This is that new segment called the United Monarchy. Now, when you come to 1 Samuel, you're not there yet, but it's getting ready to happen because there's so much that's going on in 1 Samuel. And the United Monarchy is unique in the whole history of Israel because there were only three kings of the United Monarchy. The first one, Saul. The second one, David. And the last one, Solomon. Well, where was this? This was in Palestine, where modern-day Israel is also located, and it's after the conquest of Joshua and the period of the Judges, and the monarchy was going to be taking shape under Saul. But there was one major player in, the, in this drama, and it was Samuel. Samuel, of course, is who we're introduced to in the first few chapters of 1 Samuel, as a little boy that after Hannah had prayed for a son, God gave her a son. And he heard the voice of the Lord while he was asleep near the Ark of the Covenant. And on the third time after going to visit Eli, he said, if you hear the voice of him call your name again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Well, Samuel did exactly that. And for the rest of the book and into 2 Samuel, we even see Samuel always listening to what the Lord says, even when he doesn't want to. So the, the fantastic part of this and what, may, what keeps the, the pages turning is watching the activity of Samuel compared to the activity of these monarchs, specifically in 1 Samuel, Saul and what happens with him. Well, in the first portion, we see the call of Samuel that we just described, but then the uh, political conditions in Israel began to deteriorate. For one, uh, one really troubling thing that happens is the ark is captured by the Phil Philistines. And that was just the beginning of trouble with the Philistines, back and forth and, and, and not being able to have success against them and finally getting the ark back but realizing uh, the people began to call on the name of the Lord to give them a king like the other nations. Well, Samuel didn't want that, but God said, give him, give him a king anyway. He anoints Saul. Then Saul begins to prophesy. He has moderate success. And in chapters 1 through 16, all of this is happening. This is what is meant by the transition period, because it wasn't like there, immediately there was a king. It, things developed over time. And then after he becomes king, he begins to have trouble. From chapter 16, verse 1, following, Saul is politically a good king. He looks like a king. He's forceful. But there are plenty of times that he doesn't do what the Lord asked him to do. He gets ahead of himself. He makes very tragic mistakes. And then we start to see the failure in this part two, really beginning at verse one of chapter 16, all the way to the end, the gradual failure of Saul as a very dysfunctional uh, character and the rise of David. And so uh, really it, it, gets, it gets exciting. So many different things happen. And by the time you get to the end of it, well, Saul dies tragically in battle by taking his own life. And then eventually David becomes king in beginning in this next book. But 
the parts are very clear. There's the need in part one for a king and Saul's, you know, limited success. And then part two, there's his failure because of his dysfunction. And then my favorite part, you know what I'm going to mention. My favorite scripture in first Samuel is in the story of David and Goliath. It's before he's king, but after he's been anointed to be king. And uh, the way his brothers talk to him in that in that passage, you just have to read it. It's, it's just exciting to read. But here we find David in the in the valley. He's facing up against Goliath. And the Philistine, Goliath, said to David, uh, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Ooh, right? And so in verse 44 of Chapter 17, the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Whoa, that's dramatic. But this is my, <laughs> this is my favorite scripture. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Wow, what a dramatic claim. David puts a stone in his sling, whizzes it in his, in his uh, slingshot, as it were, and hits him right between the eyes, knocks him down, and does exactly what he said he would do. And began to have David, they had a tremendous victory over the Philistines on this day, and David rose to prominence. Lots of trouble with Saul and, su and such before he eventually became king, but man, everything turns on, on this interchange with Goliath, and we see the mighty hand of the Lord on David in 1 Samuel. What a book, and I know you'll enjoy reading it. Thanks for watching Bible on the Go with Dr. Dan. If you like these videos, the best thing you could do is hit that button called subscribe. You only have to do it once, and it doesn't cost a single thing. Praise God!